Hello, and welcome back to Podger the Modcast. My name is Tim Held. This week, we have Sam Precop and John McIntyre on the show. Sam and John make up the duo Sons Of. I just saw them the other night in Seattle, and uh, they came over the day after on their way to Portland and recorded a chat here in my studio. Um, so yeah, that's going to be coming up here in a moment. Um, John and Sam are also a part of the band The Sea and Cake, and John is one of the three drummers in Tortoise. Uh, the Sea and Cake and Tortoise have been two of my favorite bands for probably 12 to 15 years, so it was pretty surreal to have them here, but it was uh, it was just a really cool experience. Really, really nice guys. Had an awesome chat. They played an awesome set, and we are going to get into that here momentarily. Um, before we get into that, though, I've got some demos. I'm going to play a little something here on my Novation Summit. I want to say thanks to Novation for sending me this summit. Um, I told you guys at the towards the end of the year when I first got it that my plan was to master the summit. Uh, but as you know, my mom had some health complications and has been in the hospital for a while, so... I haven't really done much with the summit or really much gear at all. Um, so Mulligan, I'm going to uh, start over. But I did create this voice here and decided to try to run it through uh, some modular gear. Luckily, I've got the exchanger and the injector from Board Brain, which both allow line level stuff to play nicely with your Euro gear. So why don't we just check this patch out really quick? So I've got the Summit running clean into the interface, and then I've also got it running into the Nautilus and then into the Aurora, both by Qubit. Um, and then I'm running it into the injector from Board Brain, and then into the shaped dual envelope VCA from 4MS, and then from there into the Mimeophone from Make Noise, and then I've got another... Uh, yeah, I'm using the cutting room floor as well from recovery effects and I think that's about all I've got going on here for for modules and the synth but yeah just made a pretty cool sounding little patch here That's enough noodling for now, but uh, once again, thank you to Novation for sending me along the summit. 2023 is going to be the year that I, maybe not master, let's let's not get it carried away, but get good, very good at using the, uh, the summit. I love it already. Super, super, um, it's really easy to use right out of the box, which you know I love a piece of gear that is fun right out of the box, but it's deep enough to uh, really dive into and swim around in for a while or should I say it's high enough to climb to a good altitude that's a dumb joke sorry I would like to say thank you to Patchworks for their continued support of Podular Modcast please visit them online at p-a-t-c-h-w-e-r-k-s.com they're doing a giveaway with recovery effects I think it starts this week um, for one of the Mystic desktop semi-modular uh, FM synths, so keep an eye out for that. Um, you could probably get just about everything that you see in this shot if you're watching the video at Patchworks. So once again, that's p-a-t-c-h-w-e-r-k-s dot com. I would also like to say thank you to After Later Audio for their continued support of Podular Modcast. Please visit them online at afterlateraudio.com. A bunch of cool modules recently came out in the Mutable Instruments Classics line and some other really cool stuff will be coming out this year, including this thing that you really can't see right now, but it's, it's my new module, and I'm very, very excited for that to come out. But what is it? I don't know yet. 
let's do some demos and then uh, get into this chat. All right, we're gonna get into a patch here using a guitar with a bunch of really cool modules. But first, I just wanna show you the injector on its own uh, from BoardBrain, really cool module. You can get your guitar or any other uh, instrument with a quarter inch output in there up to Euro levels through the Euro output. You can send your line output um, and then there's an effects send and return. Uh, you've got an envelope and gate generator here. So you've got a, a positive negative envelope output and then you've got a gate output and these knobs are their sensitivity. Um, and then that envelope, you can get a slow, medium or fast uh, envelope shape. And then right here above where it says extractor, you've got slow, medium and fast. This switch here, uh, that's just like a slow, medium or fast envelope. So yeah, a nice clean sound. You can add some drive. But I think it shines brightest with the amp simulator on. So let's check that out. So you have some EQ options here. First off is the bright switch. So it was just off, now it's back on. Off, on. So yeah, nice little high pass filter and a switch. And then the presence is uh, basically like a low pass filter. So all the way up, you've got your lows present. Turn that all the way down. And then the character is kind of like a, uh, a band pass. I like it with the bright on and the character and presence around noon and uh, just a little south of noon for the drive. Like, mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, it works People really love, well with yeah, modular. Yeah. Like, yeah. Um, I know like the expert sleepers, um, like the ES8 and 10 work really well oh, with that, okay. um, which I haven't got yet, but I really would like to. I don't really ever clock anything into my DAW, which just always makes things take so much more fucking time because I'm like, I'm not on a grid. So when I want to keep things in time or make cuts or whatever, it's, it, I just make things so much fucking harder for myself than I need to. But um, yes, I just got this. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I always, yeah, I, well, I'm still figuring it out. Depends on what out. you're making, of course. Yeah. I think starting out with electronic music, everything was on the grid. And I just basically would like build my own sample packs to cut and make loops with. Um, yeah. So I think getting into this was kind of a... Like a, a got you off the grid. You've got kind of got me off the grid. <laughs> I, I've been re rediscovering off the grid too. I mean, sometimes that shit, you know, rocks the hardest when it's you yeah got something on the grid. But then I love like yeah, off time loops and yeah. Stuff. I like I like messing with that a little bit as long as I can make it sound like it makes a little sense. Um, well, but yeah. now with like the drums, I'm. I'm still trying to figure out how to incorporate that, but I've got like that, um, the 4MS percussion interface, so oh, I could right. like build gates off of like envelope follower. Um, and then I got this thing recently, this injector, which is same thing, but it's got like a guitar preamp on it. That sounds really nice actually. So, cool. um, All right, sorry, yeah. 
But yeah, I don't know where to start with you guys. Um, so Sam has been on the show before, and I caught his kind of backstory. Um, so if maybe I could just talk to John for a minute and just kind of ask you some similar questions, and it'll naturally uh, evolve into talking about both of you guys because I just was just uh, talking with Sam out front. But like next year will be thirty years. You guys have been making music together. Yeah, That's you just crazy. said that out loud. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> So, um, so I'm not even 30 years old. <laughs> <laughs> I just did my 20, 20 year, uh, high school graduation this last summer. And that made me feel really, really old. Um, but yeah. So the story I got from Sam of how you guys met and how you started playing with C and cake was you were interning or worked at the studio when that project was starting. I guess I was technically working there. Okay. Probably not being paid at that point. Yeah. So what what is that really? But I was I was Interning yeah, lackey. Yeah. <laughs> Unpaid lackey. That's that's what you're looking for. Yeah. Were you you were there every day, I guess. Mostly. Yeah. yeah. And you were pretty young at this point, right? Like um just out of high school? I would have been no, no, college. Uh so uh, probably 22 or 23. Okay. All right. So where like I like to ask people, what is like the earliest memory of music like getting into your soul? Is there anything from your early childhood that still like is like gives you a, a nostalgic thing or you can say maybe is one of the early seeds that kind of led to you becoming a musician? I don't know. Uh, I do remember being very young in the car with my mom listening to AM radio and that song Windy by the Association. Came on, I can, and it just I can it, hear it kind of. It just blew my mind. Uh huh. And I was like, "Mom, what is that?" <laughs> it's got that great harpsichord part in there. I don't know. It's just it's it's a wonderful pop song. But mm -hmm. I mean, that as a very young child, it was like, okay, there's something to this. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then after that, is is there a band or um, a type of music that kind of triggered the? desire to participate like not only do i love listening to this i want to do this i mean i don't again from a very early age i think i just always wanted to play the drums mm -hmm. for whatever reason yeah. you know and it, I, kind of like everybody else when you're young you got to go through those phases so like i was super into the who and led zeppelin you know and it mm -hmm. was like that that was kind of the, the focus and then it turned into more like whatever was contemporary metal, like <laughs> Iron Maiden, stuff like that. Then I went to hardcore and then, you know, just yada, yada, the whole mm -hmm. progression of stuff. So, yeah. Yeah, I had kind of a similar thing. It's I f it's funny, it always kind of starts with like the, the pre-metal hard rock, then you get into metal, and then I feel like you age out of that maybe. Not age out, because there's still some metal I like, but yeah. I feel like it's a natural pro progression to either get into punk or hardcore. I never that. got into metal. No? I mean, I, I understand why not. I, maybe I just heard the wrong stuff. Yeah. But. I mean, it's... <laughs> yeah, metal, it's, maybe. It's hard, but... Uh, um, so when did you start playing drums? When I was 10. 10, yeah. okay. And were you taking lessons early on? or just Yeah. Kind of, okay. Yeah. So you're, like, trained and you know... I studied all through, um, you know, grade school and, and high school and into college. Okay. And then where does, like, electronic music come in? Because uh, Sam was mentioning that, like, when you guys got together, like, he... You kind of introduced him to yeah. electronic music, or not music, but technology. So I went to uh, school at Oberlin Conservatory, and um, <clears throat> I was accepted as a percussion major and uh, quickly found out that that wasn't for me. <laughs> so <laughs> my sort of... full of <laughs> Oh, I just didn't have the chops, you know. Um, I was there with these kids that had been, like, playing six mallet marimba since they were five years old, and I just I couldn't hack it, and... So my fallback position was the the electronic music department was still in the conservatory, you know, so they we didn't have to do a whole bunch of like administrative stuff mm -hmm. to switch over. Um, and my percussion professor was glad to get rid of me. <laughs> and we need more room. I, I know. And the uh, electronic music department was like, come on over here. We need bodies. So, OK. Yeah. And what kind of like what kind of gear and, and stuff were you like? using and drawn to at that point so this was uh this would have been around 1988 i guess so it was kind of a weird transition point um 
You know, like so the like, emulation, the digital emulation stuff's kind of popping off, right? Like the DX7 kind of we, era. So like our, our first tier class was a VCS3, a 2600, and like a DX9 or okay. something. So we were kind of like, it, it was good in the foundational sense of learning all the building blocks of analog. Mm. And then with, you know, like the DX, it was like kind of getting, introducing you to FM mm -hmm. and everything. Um, so second year, we actually had... Um, we we had the ve the very early you know Max with like some very primitive like the black and white ones so. yeah yeah <laughs> but the the main like computer music course we had was um, writing code in C plus oh, plus wow. okay. on this for this mainframe computer that was the size of a refrigerator uh -huh. <laughs> and it was like I see that's when we were listening to that. Um, that record today, I was like, that's maybe that's what he was using, something like that, you know. What's his name again? John McGuire. John McGuire. Yeah. Um, so you could you could type all this code in, and eventually it would you know render like thirty seconds of sound. <laughs> it was quite satisfying <laughs> so in a weird Bernard way. You, yeah. Uh, we're dealing oh, with yeah. one of those. You yeah. you know you read about that shit. Yeah. Know? So when you like, so if you got like that thirty seconds, would you then like put that? onto tape and then loop that loop the tape not like, necessarily well i mean you could yeah. for sure but i think it was more like compose an etude and present it you right, know what right. i mean okay like yeah did now so like I, I was just talking with my friend greg about this i don't think i would have you know 15 years ago i would like well there's a reason i ha i got into electronic music when i did is because like the you know old like older digital sense and the amount of like button combinations and understanding a little bit of code and all that like that's just like way above like it's it's i'm sure i could learn it but i just don't have the like the the attention span for it i can't i need like the immediate turn this knob this sure. happens but like yeah. were you gravitated to kind of like the kind of the technical like like arduous process of doing all this weird sh stuff to make that 30 seconds no no not so much but <laughs> so that the corollary to that is the um the second year analog studio had the big Moog system, like a 55 nice. and a pretty decent size Bukla 200 and, you know, half inch eight track. And okay, I mean, it was pretty primitive on the recording side, but like, you know, pretty decently outfitted mm -hmm. in terms of the gear. Okay. And as far as getting into electronic music, I'm, I'm always curious because I feel like there, there are generally two paths. It's like you hear some music that you like and you want to try to you know, find a way to make that so you get pulled into the gear or you're just kind of like, that looks crazy. I want to know what that's like. like. Was there a band that pulled you in or was there another person who kind of... Um, in terms of rock music, I always loved Para Ubu and Alan Ravenstein's work with them. Um, but I think at that time I was probably more into the contemporary classical side and people like... Zanakis and you know Pandareski and um, I'm blanking. There's so many, Stock so many of the stock houses. I mean, mm -hmm. there's like all all these composers from the latter half of the 20th century Concrete. that were doing electronic and music concrete, and that that's sort of more where my head was at okay. in regard to that. Yeah. Okay. okay. So, so you're pulled into this. So, like you're like at a young age, you had like a really really eclectic, uh, you know, taste in in music and kind of pulled in a lot of directions um so so you start working at this studio like were you were you hope well like was the the pie in the sky dream to become like a an engineer or did you want to become a touring musician because you kind of did both yeah, yeah. okay <laughs> right on yeah. so you did it yeah. um and then were you doing tortoise and the sea and like what when did you join like which one came first I mean, the origins of Tortoise go back to probably 1989 or 90. Okay. When Johnny and Doug started playing together. Okay. And it was very, very informal at that point. Mm -hmm. You know, it was just like, hey, you want to, you know, Brad who owned the studio. He's like, oh, Brad has some time open. You want to just go in and work on some ideas? You know, so it was like these little fragments of things that have been floating around for a while. Okay. And eventually <clears throat> I played in a group called Bastro with Bundy Brown and David Grubbs and uh, Johnny and Doug we'd just become friends from music scene mm -hmm. um, 
they were like, Hey, we have this weird project. You guys want to like see if we can do some stuff together. So okay. that was, that was the original quartet lineup. Okay. Um, and, uh, so we, yeah. And then Dan Bittney kind of joined around mid 93, I guess. And that was the lineup for the first record. And that was kind of the same time that I started playing with C and Cake. Okay. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Cause you were mentioning that like C and Cake and Tortoise would tour together and did like Euro tours and stuff. Like we did a lot. How yeah. Was yeah. that exhausting? Like playing in retrospect. Yeah. He yeah. Was young, though, you know, I know yeah. I was, I was a whipper. Oh yeah. Double duty. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> there was, Oh, do you remember Derby day? In probably 94 when I played with Gaster del Sol. Tortoise and Sea and Cake. Awesome, man. <laughs> <laughs> I guess I was there. <laughs> uh, Derby Day. Derby Day. They still do that? Probably. Louisville, you know. They, oh, okay. It's, it's All right. It used to Big be deal. legendary shows, it's a, you know. Like, it's a uh, party situation. Okay. Yeah, I hadn't yeah. heard of that. Slant reunions. And oh, yeah. cool. Yeah. Cool. Um, so when does Jeff come into the picture then? Um, so he was our roommate for a while. Um, in the mid '90s, and we just asked him to like guest on some stuff, mm -hmm. um, and it became more apparent that it was like, hit what he was contributing was like really, really great and uh, helping elevate the whole thing, uh, obviously. And that was right around the time when Dave Pajo was leaving. Okay. So, well, I mean, there was a brief. Well, we actually made TNT as a six piece. Okay. Oh, and then I didn't know that. when the album was done, Dave, um, Dave left, and and Jeff was like ready to stay on full time. Okay. So, yeah. Cool. Cool. Um, yeah, I love that his new record or newish that four yeah. folks yeah, yeah, record. Yeah. It's amazing. Yeah. Fucking amazing. Um, yeah, actually, I I briefly talked to him in a really weird circumstance. There's, do you know Tim Heidecker, the comedian, like yeah, Tim and Eric? Yeah. So he has a, a, a podcast called Office Hours, and Jeff and Steve Gunn were on mm. that. And uh, they do a thing where they can talk, like you, you join a Zoom and as the audience can, can oh, jump in. Yeah. And uh, yeah, so I, I briefly talked with, with Jeff through that. I doubt he remembers it. <laughs> um, yeah, uh, okay. So I'm, I'm also curious, this might be a question that you've been asked ad nauseum, so uh, I apologize ahead of time, but like, is the was the plan always to do multiple drummers or was it kind of did that just kind of happen and if so like how did that because that seems like so you guys have so much stuff going on that yeah just... i mean there was never really a plan for anything mm -hmm. to be honest um it was just sort of like let's try this and see if it works mm -hmm. you know um and eventually throughout that I feel like we kind of stumbled upon some things that ended up being really interesting in terms of um, orchestrating parts mm -hmm. between two drum kits. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, definitely not a plan. Okay. Yeah, <laughs> and I think I've I've talked with with John Johnny uh, Herndon about this a little bit, but. Um, you guys like don't like don't often write or ever write together. You kind of all come with your own pieces and then like write your parts to it and then f like yeah. flesh it all out together. Yeah. Um, and then, yeah, it's just I've always wondered. Like I've been I've been in a five piece band and I was in that band for five years and you know I lived with two of the members and you know we were young and we partied and and I always joke that being in a five piece band is like maintaining a a five way. Uh, relationship that you can't like have sex to break the tension <laughs> so it's like really it could be like difficult and i imagine with like the amount of people that like i don't know that just seems like a good way to go about it so like you're not spending like all your waking time and it's probably like that sounds like you know if you everybody has like a handful of ideas like when you all get together that sounds like it could be like a pretty like fun and um you know just like creatively exciting experience yeah, for sure yeah. yeah um where was i going with that i had a reason that i said all that and i'm blanking now um i mean i think it's one of the reasons why we still are all working together is that there's a lot of diffusion mm -hmm. in what we do you know everybody has their own other projects and then we can 
whatever, however many years, circle back around and be like, okay, let's do this again, you know, mm-hmm. and it's fresh. Yeah, yeah, and I imagine with, with like, especially with, with Sea and Cake and then with, with Tortoise, like, like, how do you guys all decide, like, it's album time? I usually decide that. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's true. Well, it's yeah. true because I'm like, oh, I got to write all the fucking lyrics. <laughs> well, that happens later. <laughs> you can just tell when it you know, might work or you feel like... Just kind of like... Know. And I imagine, like, do you guys, like, have different compartments in your brain when you're, like, when, when you have, like, the muse slaps you upside the head and you start doing something? Like, do you feel like this is a... A Sons of piece, this is a Sam Precott piece, or this is a Sea and Cake or Tortoise, or? Um, well, usually if I'm doing so, it's usually pointed in one direction okay. or like already, kind of. So, yes, I don't have like a big pot of jams that I <laughs> dedicate to separate projects. Mm-hmm. So, um, and usually when I'm deep in it, I don't like switch around either. So, Okay. I've been doing okay. like Sons of Electron for you know since the uh, throughout the pandemic. Yeah, we were talking. It's been I, like yeah. I mean, I'm always hoping to do it. It's. Mm-hmm. I'm not gonna say it's easier, but it's like it's easier to pass the time mm-hmm. messing with this mm-hmm. as opposed to like I don't sit around singing right. for fun. Right. Not, that just blows my mind because like and I was something else I was thinking about like just listening to your speaking it's not voice. even like music to, it's something else entirely that's yeah. what makes it interesting but it's like that's I used to sing and write lyrics and that was like my goal I wanted to be uh you know when I was younger I wanted to be Connor Oberst and then you know right. then I wanted to be Bill Callahan and I'm just like I am neither of those people so I I, I have a weird relationship with singing I mean I think it's Amazing, but it's, I don't like think about it mm-hmm. ever. Kind of, it's sort of weird. I know that when it's time to do it, I get into it, and it's really hard, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. which makes it interesting. Well, something, yeah, because you kind of mentioned that last time we were talking, and something that I was thinking of last night was, you know, like I think one of the the, the first things that stuck out to me with C and Cake, especially at this point in my life when I was wanting to be a singer songwriter, is. Mm-hmm your voice is very very distinct and like you have your own thing and then you hear you speak and you wouldn't it doesn't make sense to me like you have like a kind of a deeper talking voice but you have this like really airy higher register singing like so like do you have to ramp up if you're not always singing do you have to like ramp up and build that back up or can you go right into that that register uh I don't know. I'd have to <laughs> ramp it up, I guess. I, yeah. The thing is, that when I'm doing it, I'm not thinking, oh, put that voice on. Right. That it's whole just thing how is like sing. evolved. Uh huh. And it sort of evolved with the music, too. I, yeah. You know, it's sort of, it's all, when I first started singing, it sounded different. I can't even remember, but it was lower. Well, yeah. I think. Have you heard Shrimp Boat? I haven't listened to Shrimp Boat, but so I know, like, Jacking the Ball. Yeah, is that that's you singing on that yeah. one? Because that's, so that's like deep so right? different. That's yeah. like that's like transitional voice for him. Okay, but the shrimp boat stuff is amazing, and it's you. I need you'd to be be shocked. Okay, yeah, I've been meaning to go <laughs> back like and check. I'm like screeching. Yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. But there's also you can hear. You, you can, can hear the you in there too. What exactly. uh-huh. comes later. Yeah. But. Okay. Okay. Um, and I, God, I thought of the dumbest joke last night, and I'm sure you've heard it before, but just in case you haven't, did you and Archer ever consider maybe doing a shrimp cocktail? Like, awesome. mashup? Has anybody ever made that joke? No. Oh, my God. I feel so good about that. Um, <laughs> shrimp co- I do like shrimp cocktail. I had, one day, I had some the other night, and I'm like, God damn. Yeah. Cold shrimp and the right... <laughs> so speaking of Archer, is there any? I mean, I know you you guys have been focusing on doing your the Sons of stuff, but is there any C and Cake plans or? Um, well, the other day I was like, it's over. Really? C and Cake. <laughs> but clearly, <laughs> perhaps not. <laughs> well, we've been thinking, oh man, Archer, we we gotta help him. Take him away. We don't know from, what he's doing. Where is he? We don't we, even know. We feel that he's lost without <laughs> yeah. the jams, which I think I'm. I'm sure that well, he makes that his own he's missing. Uh, yeah. 
you know, what we do. I mean, the, the pandemic thing is really like, without realizing it, like threw everyone for a bigger loop than you yeah. would have thought kind of, you know. But I actually kind of like, I'm like, oh good, yeah. Yeah. Don't, no rock band. <laughs> get, down, get down to my, my techno day job. That's right. <laughs> Um, but you know, I'm just gonna go with it. I, I, yeah. it could have. I could wake up tomorrow, like you know what, time to make a scene mm-hmm. cake record. Okay, yeah, I was just wondering, like, but I haven't. There's no grand plan. I'm like, yeah. okay, right now I'm deep into the. You know, the sun's up, and mm-hmm. we have more shows coming, and I think we should make another record quick. And yeah, you know, so, but it would be a shame to toss off. The C and cake. Yeah. I mean, why? If you can do it. Yeah. Keep doing it. You know? So I'm, is, I'm definitely not opposed, but I don't have a. Is Archer in Chicago or? or? Well, that's the thing. He's he has a house in Chicago, but he's never there. Okay. Because he and his wife have a uh, kind of like a boutique shop kind of thing in Michigan, about like an hour and a half, two hours away, and they're deep deeply into that thing that they've been doing for a while. Okay, what part of Michigan? Uh, Lakeside, it's called, so it's Mm -hmm. right around, it's like due east of Chicago on the other side of Lake Michigan, basically. Okay, all right, so just like like east east of Kalamazoo or a little further north or? So Kalamazoo, yeah, would be west of, because it's on the lake. Oh, that's what I meant, yeah, west of Kalamazoo, right. Because Kalamazoo's in the middle, sort of, right? Of Michigan, I think so. Yeah, it's kind of like left of center, lower. I I went to West. Well, anyways, it's on the lake. There's a lot of little, you know, sort of like Hamptons of Chicago, mm-hmm. slightly, yeah. but okay. low rent ish. Uh huh. Okay. I mean, it's not like mansions. Right. Like right. Yeah. But Michigan it's nice. Style. I mean, it's yeah. You don't have to go too far into there. I p- actually played a gig on a farm. You know, in tall buildings. Uh, he made a record all of Reich covers on oh. a synthesizer. Anyway, it's one guy. I can't think of his name. Now, but, uh, he had me out to play on this farm in the area, and it w- I'm like, I cannot believe I. It took me an hour and a half to get here, and I'm like, in like Pennsylvania yes. Dutch yeah, country. Yeah. <laughs> it was beautiful. Yeah, incredible. Yeah, yeah. it's uh, a lot of Michiganders really nice. come out here I think because there's I think a similar love for the like nature out there because it's so beautiful but then I feel like people see stuff like Mount Rainier and they're like well that's not out here I need to come out here um yeah but as actually in Kalamazoo when I was in grad school is when I discovered sea and cake and and tortoise um kind of around the same time and um I always lament but you know it's it's part of my 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 story or whatever but uh that you know, I grew up in a town called Roslyn, which is just uh, east of here, about 80 miles. Um, my graduating class was 84. I didn't have MTV. The only radio stations were like uh, a classic rock and country. Mm-hmm. So like I didn't know, like I had shit taste in music because I just didn't really have a lot of exposure. Yeah. Um, so I, I just like my like college experience, especially going out to Kalamazoo and finding like, you know, hearing tortoise and seeing cake stuff was just like I'd never heard stuff quite like that before and I'm just like so thank you guys I'm very thankful for finding that stuff <laughs> thank you um yeah standards is uh is is a special one for me um that fucking opening I actually <laughs> texted Herndon and I was like dude is this who which which one of you guys is playing this but that um oh, what's the song I always get the the name titles it's the first track after like the big long Seneca. intro yeah Seneca oh, yeah. like that that fucking intro drum beat is just like every time that like if I'm feeling like uh, I want to get pumped up for something like I'm not feeling like I want to go to a, a social <laughs> event or something I probably, like if I listen to Seneca I'm like I'm ready to go All right, let's do this <laughs> <laughs> alright I'm going to do a similar patch as I did last week with the guitar stuff but this time I'm going to have a video so hopefully it'll make more sense you can see there's a lot going on right there so let's just take a listen to what that sounds like Okay. 
Okay, so I'm using the injector from Board Brain. Um, putting my guitar through there. I'm using the amp simulator. Uh, got the drive down. Uh, let's see. I'm using the um, the gate out to trigger the first envelope on the 4MS uh, dual shaped envelope VCA. Uh, then using the end of the uh, end of rise out of that to trigger the second envelope and all sorts of modulation controlling the shape and the rate of both envelopes. Uh, and then for like effects and stuff, I'm using the cutting room floor and the bad comrade from recovery effects and then the strega from make noise and the Weston precision audio uh, SF1 dual or stereo filter. Here I'm using it as a stereo filter and uh, yeah. Let's see here, let's run through it all. Okay, so I've turned down the uh, input for the filter and the Strega, so now all we're gonna hear is the guitar going through the cutting room floor, and I'm using the positive envelope from the envelope generator on the injector to control the CV of the cutting room floor. <laughs> Sounds pretty cool. Now let's just do uh, the Strega. Okay, now just the uh, the left side of the Weston here. So there are two outputs per side on the Weston. One is uh, going straight into the interface, and then the, the second one is actually going into the uh, channel B on the 4MS uh, uh, VCA. So let's just listen to one at a time. So here is the, the uh, second output from the filter going into the VCA. That's pretty cool, nice and choppy. And then here is the first output. It's in uh, band pass. And then once again together. Okay, now let's look at the other side of the SF1. And once again, one at, one at a time. So I've got the second output going into the A VCA on the, uh, the 4MS there. So let's just listen to that. Okay, and now just the uh, the other input, not going through a VCA. And then one more time together. Just the filter together, both sides. Oh, I should also stress that I'm using the uh, the bad comrade output to go into the filter, so that's why it's got that glitchy fuzz sound going on. And then, as far as um, you know, modulation, obviously. The, uh, the shaped dual envelope VCA is doing a lot of it, but I'm using the Oct from DivKid and uh, Instruo just to add a little extra uh, 
coolness to it. So I've got I've got it molted into both of the cutoffs just so it's not just like, you know, kind of a, a repeating wah-wah kind of effect. Um, and then I'm using the oct to control the shapes and the uh, rise and fall times of both of the envelopes. So... So let's get all of these together one more time. Alright, I just want to take a moment to say thank you to everybody who supports PodMod on Patreon. If you would like to support PodMod, you can head over to patreon.com forward slash podular modcast. And if you're watching the video, then on the screen you see all this stuff on the floor, all these uh, patch cables and modules and stickers and cassettes, and you may be wondering, like, what? why is this on the screen? And if you're listening, well then, just imagine it. Uh, but I have too much stuff. I have way too much stuff, and I've been trying to think of ways I can give back to the Patreon community. Last year, I was able to, uh, you know, just send out some modules, um, and I said I would like to keep doing that in the future, but it takes a while for stuff to build up and for me to, to gather things together. Well, now I have a bunch of stuff. So, I am going to be posting this on the Patreon page at the end of the month. Uh, and it's going to be a first come first serve thing. I can't do like giveaways, like, you know, like, uh, lottery style or contests or anything, but there's, there's nothing saying I can't just, you know, randomly share some stuff that I, uh, that I don't need anymore that you may want. So if you want to be in the loop on these types of things, uh, over at the Patreon, then sign up once again, patreon.com forward slash popular modcast. There's a link in the show description. I'm also going to be doing sample packs throughout the year, and every week we will have a bonus section of each episode. So, yeah, what are you waiting for? Head on over to patreon.com forward slash podularmodcast. Thanks for listening. I want to ask you the same same question I asked Sam a little bit ago about, like, this, do you have, like, like, a compartmentalization as far as, like, ideas for tracks? Like, oh, this, I'm, I'm making something... Do you sit down to make something for Tortoise, for Sons of, or or seeing cake ideas? I mean, or do you start making something and then be like, okay, this would fit here? I would like to get to a point now where I can just have a file cabinet full of ideas. Mm-hmm. But, you know, traditionally it's been kind of what he was saying. It's more directed. It's mm-hmm. like, okay, this is coming up. We've got a, a schedule that we need to meet with this. Mm-hmm. So it's like down to brass tacks. But yeah, I really envy the people that do have like, you know, <laughs> everything well organized mm-hmm. and like, oh, I had this idea that I that I put down like a year and a half ago that we could maybe resurrect and see what we can do with, you know. Yeah, yeah it would so. never happen to me. Never with you. Like an older idea. I I'm like You're, completely so restless. He, yeah. He's he's so in the moment. Like we've recorded a lot of stuff as a duo. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, Sam, we should go back and Hell revisit no. that there's something in there he's like nope 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 <laughs> new tracks new tracks well i can I, I get that sense because like i feel like you you uh simultaneously inspire me and make me feel lazy as far as like being a musician you because might be lazy. i might be lazy <laughs> um i mean a little bit I'm but, just uh, kidding, man. but i i just feel like you you're constantly posting like these videos of this you know new patch you're you're working on like your your passion for working with modular as your palette is very very clear and like i feel like you spend a lot of time with learning your pieces of gear um to really get the most i do have some time on my hands yeah (laughs) Yeah, but it's kind of weird it's like a weird job i mean yeah i like doing the put i've been referring back to them for this show because i'm like you know because i have the stuff worked out somewhat Mm -hmm. and i'm like Mm -hmm. well what am I forgetting in this section? I'm like, go back <laughs> to last week. I'm like, that's, that's it. Yeah, yeah. nice that's little Sonic Journal. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, it's not, but it's been very useful because so, uh, yeah, a little, yeah, sketchbook. 
uh, no, notated notations, fleeting notations of fleeting yeah. ideas. Because that's it. Yeah, you can lose it and then totally. Like, yeah. Oh, I don't know what happened. Yeah. Do you have like a, a like? Do you do it when you feel like it and you just always feel like it, or do you have like a even if I don't feel like it, I'm gonna like do the work, kind of thing. Um, I try not to do it if I don't feel like it, but mm. I'm always. Yeah. I think since I have kids, you know, so I have like a very routine. Like I get up, mm -hmm. make them breakfast, go to school, mm -hmm. and then I go down to my studio as if it's I've gone to work and I'm. Like, yeah. I've got kind of I the push, same situation. I like turn everything on in a certain order. It also feels like ah, I've arrived. You're to, punching to in the office. Yeah. And, <laughs> yeah. and then, so if I was making like a record, although I I do like to, uh, I do like it because it's you know an accurate snapshot of what I'm doing right there. I mm -hmm. don't like. It's usually part of a bigger thing that I'm working on, so I can I might like say okay, this will work as a a minute, mm -hmm. you know, so I might like tweak it a little bit so it might be interesting within that Instagram time frame. Right. So with But it's this... usually I'm just the patch is there because of some other reason and Okay. Uh, okay. Yeah. So with this in the moment kind of thing that, that John just described, like do you have to track it and then almost kind of like arrange it and mix it within a short period of time be, or or it'll kinda of just kinda of go to that backlog. Well that I I record or... a lot of the stuff and uh so that's also part of it. You record and don't check it out for a while, and then mm -hmm. I'll go back through stuff, and you can tell almost instantly, like, okay, this has potential. Do you ever go back and find stuff and be like, I have no recollection of making this, but I really oh, like totally, it. <laughs> yeah, no, totally. <laughs> that's happening. I mean, it is fun. I'll, occasionally, I'll go back from like a year or two ago and whatever, and my setup would have been quite different, mm -hmm. subtly perhaps to someone okay that's not up on all the stuff I right. have all the time right um, and I'll be like I could never do that again <laughs> and it actually <laughs> sounds quite interesting I could hear maybe yeah I should maybe do more of that because I am quick to like dismiss stuff me too fast which yeah. is a, a problematic as well mm -hmm. so I should I've got to John sometime like you know like the first track on Sons of is from two or three years ago, maybe even more. Yeah. And I think that's my favorite track on the like record. Like it was recorded and mixed and done. Oh, okay, that's that, live. That, okay, that's an actual. That's all live. One hundred percent live, no overdubs. It was edited a little right, bit. Right, right. But that was a show that we did in Europe. Like probably it was on our first tour or second tour. Anyway, it was one, a while. One of the two. It was a while ago. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But yeah, it was just like we actually mixed that track for a compilation. And it was rejected by the label. So we turned in something that was a little bit more atmospheric. And then I was like, Sam, remember that track that we mixed? <laughs> it was, it's actually really good. I love that, yeah. <laughs> I, was, um, I wasn't sure what to expect when I went into listening to, to the Sons of stuff. And um, it took me a minute to kind of like, not, not to get it, because, you know, I think it's like, there's a lot of complex stuff going on, but it's, you know, it's, it's, a lot of it beat drip driven atmospheric kind of you know like get, get it's lost like what in you the do thing. with this stuff it's, right kinda. it's what you do Which with I, this stuff i kind of right. like it sort of but, if, but what I else like, could you do i mean right. of course you could go any direction right. you want but i think it's sort of it's nice that it makes sense with the tools in a way you know not i feel like after you know just like every good record getting to know it and re repeat listens stepping away from it and going back to it you know um I feel like now I do get it and I do hear like you guys, you know, I, I feel like I can. And what I like about it is it doesn't sound like that much. It doesn't really remind me of stuff like comma. Um, and it doesn't, you know, feel tortoisey really, but like I can tell it's you guys because I've kind of got, yeah. and even last night, like, actually I wanted to ask about the set. Like, I feel like I picked up some stuff that sounded like it was from the record, but like, you're not playing just one for well, one. Well, we did play it. Uh, the last Ghost track. at Noon Beat. I'm recycling some of the okay. elements. Yeah, but they're not completely different contexts. Okay. No. Yeah. Was, because I, was that the last track you guys played? With the, it's got this really cool, like, kind of chord progression that 
is like kind of staccato and then kind of goes arpeggio and then right. kind of staccato -y. That's not on the record, but... I feel like I've heard that that's before. Like a I don't new... know why it sounded so familiar. Um, well, I posted a version of it. Maybe that's why. On Instagram. Okay. And um, that version is better, kind of. <laughs> <laughs> Did you guys record last night? We, we, have, we have a stereo recording. I, okay. Yeah, we're trying to do multi-tracks, but probably starting tonight. Yes. So, you know, I, I've, I'm a, um, an untrained, like a self-taught untrained, um, I don't, I can't say mixing engineer, but I, I mix my own stuff and I, I really enjoy the process of mixing, but you're like an actual mixing engineer. Um, any words of advice or can you kind of talk about your, your process as far as mixing modular and then like, especially if you're doing a stereo thing that's made up of all of your stuff, like that's so much frequency to work with. Like what kind of tools are you using? Is it just like simple light EQ and pretty some compression? Pretty, and, pretty simple. Yeah. yeah. I mean, with, with EQ cutting is always your friend. Yeah. I never more, boost. Than, more than boosting. Yeah. I mean, there, there are occasions when, you know, it's appropriate, but, um, yeah, I mean, the, and the tools that we have now are so incredible, um, just in terms of how surgical you can get if you need to. Mm -hmm. uh, but mm -hmm. um, I think I've, I've kind of like gravitated to this point where I just kind of like look at things big picture, you know, and then say, okay, what what's kind of the least amount that I can do to make it sound really good, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. and um, not fuss over things, you know, um, in in specific places and definitely i definitely <laughs> don't put like 10 plugins on every channel or what you know what i mean it's yeah. more of like a holistic kind of approach okay yeah do you yeah. do much with mid side because i'm trying to like wrap my head around that a little occasionally bit. okay yeah mid side yeah. like eq or compression, EQ or or compression. Or yeah you, I, can, you can you can apply it to anything i mean okay. yeah i just got this um minsk have you heard of that the um chaos devices no it is a yeah, it's a stair. It's just it's basically just does a couple different like mid side things. It's yeah. really simple. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I mean, I mostly like it for just checking for uh, phasing and stuff. But I feel like you can get some cool. I know some people are just like they swear by it. it's like they're almost like in a so it's fan to make club. things wider kind of. It, well, it's just it's sort of it's or... sort of like it's hard to describe. It's like the flip side of stereo, right? You know, stereo is left and right. Mid side, you deal with the information that's in the center of the image versus oh, I what's see. on the so sides. Just so you can process more those things. You can process yeah, like the, the lower, the lower mids and the and the uh, the mid mids, like in kind of a stereo way, right? Like kind of separately. And well, I mean, but usually. A typical application is the mids is going to have most of the low frequency information in it. So if you you can you can process your mid channel, you want to do a high pass filter on your mid channel, and it won't affect anything on the sides. I see you know, that. Mm -hmm. but you can also change the balance. Like if you you're like, oh, I want this thing to be a little bit wider. Naturally, you're going to have the higher stuff on the sides. Push up the sides. It's just going to feel wider. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, as far as you, like modular goes for you, John, I noticed like you had a pretty small modular setup for the sons of stuff. Do you, do you kind of just dabble and use it in that way, or do you have like a bigger case I mean, that that's, you sit yeah, down? Yeah, I have or? a pretty big case. I mean that that is purely functional for this project. It's mm -hmm. basically just a mixer and some effects. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay, and then you're using like um, one of those Roland. Uh, what is that? It's a Nord actually. Oh, that, oh, it's that a Nord okay. Drum Three P. Okay. Yeah. Do you load samples into that, or does it have a brain no, or something? No, it's just a synth engine. Okay. Um, but it sounds great. It sounds really good. Oh, yeah. 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 Cool. I'm having a hell of a time. Like, I'm I'm making my own kits on this yeah, old these, V drum. It's, these are tricky. It is tricky. Yeah. <laughs> it's like Can these... Can you load samples into this brain? I don't know. I don't yeah. I don't think so, but I, I, I haven't... I mean, I think that's from 98, so, so I'm not So it's like sure. FM drum kind of stuff? I'm not sure if it's sample-based or if it's whatever, but like... Everything sound like all the pre-made kits sound so cheesy that you have to like work yeah. pretty hard to get it just to sound like yeah. it's in just like a flat drum. Like so, I'm mixing jazz, you know, rides with different types of snares and kicks, and yeah. then it's really hard to get like the volumes 
right because the velocities yeah. you can set you can do a lot of like editing on it for how like old and simple it is but like i feel like the pads aren't super responsive so like that uh actual drum pad on the far right on the upper yeah. i just have that as my ride bell because oh, i can't yeah. get that that is there a separate zone for the bell on these there is but yeah. I, it doesn't seem to like it doesn't uh, respond in like a natural like it it's kind of right. iffy like yeah. so tracking with it because it's stereo out so i can't get individual things so tracking <clears throat> with it you know if i just hit it slightly off then i get this crash that's just like oh. you know 10 right. db higher than everything else and i'm like well that fucking takes done you know it's that's like not the, good. the nor drum uh, yeah one it's well, really and it's great. smaller too. You know? I yeah. really want one. They've like doubled in price recently. Anyway. Yeah, yeah. I actually, I just traded like a little desktop synth to my friend, uh, who had that. It was just like sitting in his house, and I, was, I told him I was like, I'm it. gonna get that, because I really like. I had a, a Yamaha Stage Custom in high school and sold it because I was poor and just never had a drum set again. And These pads are good. Yeah, These I like pads, the pads a lot. You, you could probably look into getting a. A newer brain. Yeah, that's that, what I was thinking uh, about that doing. That has better sounds. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. I'd like to get something with you know that I could load samples into, but I'm also thinking about um, just using envelope followers. You know, getting gates yeah. off of audio yeah. to trigger stuff like the you know samplers. Or so something. yeah, you totally. can get triggers yeah. out on all mm -hmm. these, yeah. right? So yeah. yeah, but they have to be power. Like I have, I think they, I think the brain powers the triggers, so I don't, I can't just put a plug like my trigger into right. that i don't think because i don't think any of these things send power and i don't know i doubt it's 48 volts it's probably like you might you should try it because like for instance on my on my nord you know i have a kick trigger and that's just a that that's just a there's no power going to that really yeah it's passive yeah so but does it go to the brain yeah okay i yeah. think hmm but the brain, it's not like, a, is it a, a TRS cable? No. It's not, oh, okay. Yeah. Well, yeah, I'll try it out. Because if I could, you know, if I got a couple, because these are pretty cheap, the 4MS yeah. uh, percussion things. If I, you know, if I could get a couple of those and run different clocks I mean, off stuff. I mean, it'd be wicked and, yeah. to design your own modular drum kit. Yeah, yeah so that's kind of why I got this little, um, I'm going to get another one of these little pods, but this is like my guitar rig that I'm trying to work with right now. Um, you know, like basically making super kind of crazy uh wah type things with uh, envelope follower um and gate into this envelope into filters and rather than using your foot you can actually use the way you're playing yeah yeah um and it's i'm, I'm still trying i'm just starting to do it but it's uh it's been pretty fun um so like I saw you, speaking of like posting stuff on Instagram and whatnot, I saw you posted just like the day before yesterday that you showed up in Portland. How do you guys prepare for playing sets together when you're in Portland and you're in Chicago? Like you don't- The day before. The day before. Well, actually I send uh, like demos of where I'm at with my, so I have it kind of somewhat worked out mm -hmm. the piece. Um, and this thing that we're working on now, it stems from my, I played with Suzanne Ciani oh, cool. a month ago. Oh, nice! Or two, like in she November. Was, she was my last, like, imper like last guest on the show. And oh, cool. So I, actually, I yeah. wrote this, you know, pretty long set and a whole new piece for that. So, mm -hmm. um, so I'm working off of that for this new set, basically. Okay. And then, so I've been sending John parts of it. You know, just to say, it, this is where I'm at. Mm -hmm. This is the zone where I'm headed to, kind of. Yeah, that's cool. Um, now, my mind was blown. I was honored that they had me do it. Yeah, and that's I, amazing. I did, like, a co-interview with her and stuff. And oh, cool. I was like, you know, this is fucking awesome. And then when we did the show, you know, we, like, hung out. It was. Yeah, she's so fucking cool. Like, like great. super laid back, got, like, a really cool. And she's, like, got a really cool, like, um kind of story of being like you know this weird pioneer on analog shit and then kind of got into the new age thing and then somebody dug up her old stuff and like she got like fully back into the modular and now she's yeah. like yeah it's it's so cool yeah, it was, um so were you you using your bukla then with her or did you use also some euro rack well it's similar setup but mm -hmm. i had my profit five as well that's oh, cool. why I, and that's sort of why i have so much gear because i 
had become trapped by my Chiani setup. <laughs> yeah. But I'm like, I can't bring the fucking Prophet 5, so I got, I can't remember what it's called, Nymphes Tiny. Oh, yeah, yeah. That, but that anyways, in effect, though, but I have too many separate thing so that the setup is less than ideal you know? okay yeah i was gonna a lot ask of about connections or whatever yeah how do you decide i guess it, it's probably i'm guessing it's based off of what you're currently making and then you build a case out of that but how do you decide yes. when you're going to fly out to portland or whatever like to what to bring because you have a pretty huge setup well yeah it's as i'm writing the patch for the show or whatever you mm -hmm. know sort of i whittle it down to what can work i mean i felt like the bukla is a special I feel like that's my instrument in some way. Or, is you that know, the 200E that you have? or It's a, uh, Easel Command. Easel Command, okay. Yeah. What, so it's, what, is all, what is all of that? Is there like oscillators and stuff, or is that all like control voltage? Because it seemed like that was like your control center last night. So I like do the most performing on that. Mm -hmm. okay. It's two oscillators, and uh, I mean, it's like a... It's a voice. A full it's voice. a voice. Contained, I mean, it's yeah. like a synth. Okay. That's what's so great about you know it's, yeah. all, it's what you need, but it's in the very particular okay. Bukla school of right. But um, it's about playing it, you know. It's, yeah, it's geared for. I mean, normally you know it would come with the touch keyboard mm -hmm. and all. It's you know the actual easel. Yeah, yeah. Um, so yeah, since I so I played the Bukla at this Gianni show. And uh, so I'm like, I had already become, like I mentioned, trapped by that because <laughs> I want to do that piece kind of, or I'm mm -hmm. like, I don't have time to re write a whole other, plus, you know, there's a lot of good shit in here. And, mm -hmm. um, but I'm like, I gotta, how am I gonna bring the bukla? Yeah. So I had to buy like a pelican case. <laughs> <laughs> but I've done other, so like on our European tours, I would not would have not had the bucolans. Mm -hmm. You know, it'd be a more pared down. Yeah. And now I'm like, you got to pare it down. This is like out of control. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. Jeremiah, <laughs> he's like, man, I saw that picture of your setup. It's not workable. It's not doable. Yeah. <laughs> and he showed up with like the tightest. Yeah, he had a cool yeah, setup. Well yeah. put together like rig, and I'm like. Mm -hmm the fuck john I, it's an embarrassment <laughs> <laughs> i've been trying to make this work and it's just it's um as a performance yeah right? like it's yeah. just it's i'm not i don't think i'm skilled enough to make that small amount of gear work for like a half hour set like well that's that's what i've discovered is uh to play an hour you have to do a lot of stuff mm -hmm, mm -hmm. yeah and to do that you need a lot. Like I have, I'm guessing, but I think up to six, seven voices that I can. They're never playing at once, and that's also a key. It's like yeah, yeah, yeah. You, know, you got to get to different sounds. So well, you're big that's on like sequencers a lot of, uh, too. Like how many? You have a couple sequencers with you, don't you? So I have one main one. Just the oh yeah, the that. vector. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, I just I actually which makes it easier to pull off that kind of show. That's mm -hmm. why I use it. It's, or one of the benefits is that, yeah, I can recall parts, mm -hmm. but also play them as I bring them right. back. Right, yeah, yeah. So, you know, the set is, uh, so the arrangement is is loose, but there's a succession of okay when things will occur, you know, mm -hmm. different sections. So and first... Jeremiah has the same, same mm -hmm. you know, it's how you, yeah. it helps organized like a show mm -hmm. if you think of it that way right yeah so that's what i tried to make like so i think going forward again with getting this smaller rig and then you know this is i don't really like to write melodic sequences you know drum sequences are one thing right um but i just really like the act of physically playing something as well you know because i'm a, like i've been playing guitar since i was 12 that's like my yeah. main instrument um so i feel like if i can you know get some you know Nebulae and Morphogene and STS all kind of have their like separate things that they can do and maybe right. do some live sampling into it. You know, that's kind of the oh, what I was thinking that'll about. Work, yeah, yeah that'll <laughs> work. Um, 
So, so for the Sons of stuff, John, do you, like, like, like I said last night, you were, didn't seem like have a lot of modular stuff there. Are you using modular gear to create the tracks or are you kind of the, the drum guy with, with all your drum machines and your... Pretty much. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Right on. Um, I mean, I think that would be interesting to just start creating some voices with the, you know, mm. the, and sampling them. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I was actually. Um, I wanted. I wanted to ask if you had heard of this analog drum synthesizer by Weston. I don't think so. Have you seen that? that it's a Portland company. Um, I, I've seen their stuff around. Kind of it's it's really pretty good. good. This filter, this SF one, is really fucking cool. But that that's like a 808 uh, modular uh, mm -hmm. thing. It's got like a a dedicated out for all the voices, and then you can get individual outs for each. There's not. So how many voices does it have? It's got kick, snare, closed, and open oh, hat, right, symbol, right. oh, and clap. Uh, cool. Uh, cool. Yeah, but you don't like you don't have CV control over anything but accent, and that might be it actually. Mm. Uh, and one thing, if I could change about it, is that there's the mix output that puts out all of the voices through one output. Mm -hmm. But if you plug, if you want to like put the kick out of its dedicated output then it takes it out, out of, of the mix, mix. Yeah. and i kind of would like i know i could uh, just mold both. it yeah. but i'd like to have both yeah. um but also just for the sake of size um it is it's pretty cool and it sounds is it, it sounds analog it's analog, analog yeah and it yeah. sounds very 8080 um cool so it's pretty cool um what else was that? I had another thing. Oh, yeah. So something else. <clears throat> my friend David that was with me at the show last night, something we were talking about after. Um, well, he mentioned something to me. He's like, uh, he's he's also a huge uh, tortoise fan. Like me and, me and him saw you guys in, at the Crocodile like six or seven years ago. Okay. Like right when, um, fuck, I'm blanking on. Uh, the, your guys' last Catastrophist. album. Catastrophist. Yeah. yeah. Um, that would be a hard one. Yeah. Name to remember. Me. Yeah, I mean, I know it, but it's like because I'm with with John, I'm gonna forget it. Um, I gotta say that uh, is it. Shake hands with danger. Yeah. <laughs> That's another one that just fucking pumps me up. Um, but he was saying, he was saying last night that uh, he's like, I'm glad to see. I mean, maybe he was misreading you guys, and I don't want to like uh, uh, like tell on him. But he said, I'm glad to see that these these guys that I've been listening to for so long and look up to as musicians, you know, he's, he's like, I could, I felt like I could see him, like, when they're first starting, I could maybe see they're a little nervous and a little, oh, little yeah. shake, like, a little shaky at first, like, their, their hands shaking to make sure they're getting their levels right and mm -hmm. stuff. Um, and so we started talking about, you know, kind of wondering the headspace that you go into, I would imagine, especially, like, with seeing cake stuff at this point, much less nerve wracking before like you're probably not even nervous before shows for that but like going it because there's this is so much more cerebral like is what's the difference in the feeling and the approach and it's pretty similar actually oh, like really? you okay. might be a bit slightly nervous or any, like before but once you're on something else totally kicks in and yeah that i, I find and that i think it's like mm -hmm. because it takes um yeah, a, a quite tremendous focus that that just like flips something on, and so I'm actually never. Once we start, <clears throat> nothing would phase me unless someone started throwing beer at me. Right, right, yeah, I'm kind of the so same it's way. Truly, you know, you, myopic, yeah, ult and that. So, and I think that's great. Mm -hmm. Like when I did the Chiani show, I'm like, yeah. You know, tons of people in a huge church kind of thing and I had a new setup and I was like beforehand when you're setting the shit up is when I'm most like holy oh my god yeah yeah <laughs> asshole <laughs> and I'm like okay maybe let's see yeah and, but as soon as I start it's like boom you know yeah and I, I even had shit fuck up while I was doing it but I'm like okay just well, I saw it, you. I saw you kind of like apologize to John, like it was like mid set. Well, like, oh, I was. Sorry. I like, did hit some fucking <laughs> random button, and it was like, boom. Got, gotta own it, man. Yeah, yeah. Do yeah. it again. <laughs> when I play, I played in Portland. It was the last live show I played, and it was the first live show I'd played in like a couple years. Um, and I, you know, I was, you know, being in Portland, it's kind of like ground zero for for modular, and I wanted to make sure that. 
I, you know, I get like self-conscious that I'm just the podcast guy and not, you know, taken seriously as a musician or whatever, you know, like that mm -hmm. part of your brain that isn't useful. Um, so I really wanted to bring a really nice set and I think I had something really good. Um, I'd actually had a, like a little pallet case. So I, cause I can't make that work. Um, and I use those dope for, um, like ethernet connections to connect two cases and my fucking hi-hat was the the patch that was going in between my cases was slightly out but you know i've got a sea of fucking and during sound check the guys the the sound guys playing like metal at like crazy fucking volume and there's no one in there and i'm just like oh this is a con but um but it was fine during sound check and then i kind of had to shift my my table over and that got unplugged but i didn't know what was going on so yeah. i was stuck in this weird spot for like six minutes of like this mid point of this track and it was doing this glitchy thing that didn't sound glitchy in a cool way and it was i just like told the audience i was just like something's fucked up give me a minute you know um so yeah i feel like when it's really really noticeable because modular is very forgiving you can kind of just say yeah well, it's all intentional but um sometimes it, you can tell it's not and i know for like my Sianis, i had like stepped on some midi cable but oh, didn't fuck. know uh -huh, fuck. and so i went to get that fucking part <laughs> Fucking nothing. Ooh, I'm like, <laughs> holy fuck! You know, in my mind, I had just fucking lost it and gone ballistic. But somehow, I'm like, it's made perhaps 30 years of experience. I did not fucking lose it. Yeah. I fucking figured it out. <laughs> and normally, I'm like, oh, of course, I don't bring fucking profits and shit to gigs. Yeah. So I'm like, you know. Anyways, I found it and I was able to just. Mm. Um, this but yeah. yeah, I mean, that's the one. The gear, it can, you know, as a perilous, can be yeah a yeah. fucking nightmare. And you know, moving and that's, from that's point what a I to worry point about B. most is mm -hmm. like, you know, so many things. Can yeah. Like fucking go <laughs> yeah. wrong. Right? Well, I imagine that's got to be kind of like with with tortoise live show. There's so many moving parts, and you guys are yeah, like switching Moore, instruments and of, like yeah. like. I'm always curious, like, do you, you guys, do you guys have like a, a sound guy that travels with you to oh, like yeah. make sure things are like turned up when they're supposed to be and, and whatnot when you're switching yeah. between stuff? Yeah, I mean, Elliot, he's been with us forever. Okay. He's amazing. Yeah. yeah. Um, we're, we're probably going to need him. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, I remember there was this moment, I don't know if it was you, if it was you and, and John Herndon or if it was Dan, but I feel like when I saw you guys in, at the Crocodile, um, there's this point where face to face drumming and I could see it in both of you you or your guys' faces where you're kind of fucking with each other and like doing stuff and almost trying to match each other. Like do you guys just kind of like is how much room for improv do you guys have when you're on stage and like do you ever just like try to get playful and fuck with each other like that? <laughs> like uh there there are sections that are a bit more open. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um but it's always within kind of a framework, you mm -hmm. know. And I don't, I don't think we ever really try to take it too far out, yeah. to be honest. But um, yeah, the, you know, happy accidents sometimes for yeah. sure. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Dan, Dan seems like he's like maybe the the jokester of the crew. He, he's the flavor flavor of the band. <laughs> okay, <laughs> he's he's our hype man. He's, <laughs> yeah, he's like that dude from the Happy Mondays. Like work What's his name? <laughs> Yeah, they have like a flavor. They have a flavor. hype man. Oh yeah. my god, that's hype man! Crazy. I like that. Yeah, <laughs> he should. Maybe we should have. He could join Sons of. <laughs> <laughs> so get the dance party going. <laughs> yes. So how about you, John? As far as like a uh, tortoise versus C and Cake versus the Sons of show, like, is there anyone that's more nerve wracking or? Um, do they like? Do they feel different on stage in a performance aspect? Or? Yeah, yeah, totally. Um, I don't know about nerves. Every every one is a bit different, you know. Mm -hmm. I, for some reason, during the course of the pandemic, I started having these nightmares about performing, oh, which really? is so weird because you know I've done it thousands of times probably, but it was like it, I'd have this recurring dream. It, usually with Taurus, we'd be like, okay, like. Okay, we're about to go on stage at Fuji Rock. There's 35,000 people there. And I'd be like, we haven't rehearsed. <laughs> <laughs> and I don't have any pants on. And where's where's the back line? There's That's no like back, There's no back line here. And they're like, "Okay, go." Yeah. <laughs> 
and I, I was telling Johnny this, and he's like, man, I had a similar dream. <laughs> I, we were at Fuji Rock, and the symbols were like these things that were about the size of a quarter, and they were way up there. And I was like, how the hell am I going to hit that? That's and, not a fucking brass symbol. And then I went to go for it, and then Doug came over and pulled it out of the way. <laughs> oh, no, yeah. I've had dreams where I'm supposed to go play a modular set, and I have no set prepared and I'm like I guess I have to create this and it's just <laughs> fucking and terrible I've also had ones where I like have to go do stand up comedy when I don't do stand up comedy right. so yeah but you are now yeah <laughs> get on it yeah um all right, well, we're uh, we're closing in, and I know you guys have to get back to Portland and play a show. Um, I thought I had one more question, but if it doesn't pop in my head by that time I'm finishing this sentence, then I'll just say thank you guys for joining me, and I really Thanks appreciate you guys it. coming over. Great, and, hanging out in your wicked studio. Yeah, I wish you guys had more time, and we could, we could do some jamming, but um, maybe next time. Um, is there anything you would like to scream from the modular mountaintops before we sign off here? Uh, hello. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that's our show. Thank you so much for listening. Thanks to John and Sam for coming on the show. Go check them out. Link in the show description to the Sons of Album. Thank you to Patchworks, Novation, and After Later Audio for their support of Podger the Modcast. And if you would like to support Podger the Modcast, please visit patreon.com forward slash Podger the Modcast. I'm going to close out the show with one more demo because I've got some cool stuff to show you. Uh, This week's secret word is uh, campfire. Sorry, that was lame, but yeah, whatever. Until next week. Okay, I just want to do a quick little uh, sound demo of the Die Zygote from Raya Media. Uh, Chris from Raya was on a few weeks back and did uh, some pretty cool demos of Die Zygote and their other modules. Um, but I just want to show you some of the sounds that I've been making. But right off the bat, let's just see what this is. So it's got this trig button. Um, and then you can, you know, lengthen your envelope. So if you turn it up all the way, you can get it droning and then all the way down. Really good for drums. The switch button switches between um, the different voices in the uh, for the output. So you get this really nice low. And then you can add that with the one with the harmonics in it or just get the one. So. So the switch button goes between uh, some different sounds. You can see the LED down here, the pair of them. And as you've probably just deduced, we have some uh, modulation options here as well. So let's just send a trig into it and then send some envelopes to the, uh, the modulation and the modulation frequency. Yeah, so as you can see, really good for drums. Um, got an envelope out here, which is pretty nice. Um, and then of course a one volt per octave, but let's just make a patch with this really quick. I think I created something pretty cool the other day. So yeah, let's check that out. 